Um, thanks, Kim. You're too kind. I think on the dancing, it's less said, soonest mended, is the phrase. Um, and I was wondering, actually, as Kim was speaking, what would you have as a collective noun for a group of doctors? Is it a gaggle? Is it a nappy of doctors? I mean, we could debate that later. Um, I'm going to do, I hope, uh, relatively, and there's a timekeeper somewhere, quick sort of flip about why this is important. And I think I, I could also start with a personal story. I mean, I, I nearly died in childbirth twice. I was what was called a near miss for my three children in my two pregnancies. And two thirds of my neonates definitely would have died. Again, if I had not had the privilege to be born in a country where specialist care was available and quick and accessible. So I think we should all remember that because I'll finish with another story, which I uh, hope will bring us back to why we're all here. Um, am I doing slides? Whoops. Okay. Go on, I'm technically illiterate. Yeah. There we go. So we've heard a lot today about the context, and uh, we heard from our very eminent speakers, and I'd just like to reiterate how delighted we are to have Madame Grasse and Michelle now as a new chair of the Partnership for Maternal, Newborn, and Child Health, which I represent, and we have several board members in the room and several very active partners who've all been very passionate about this issue for a very long time, but it's now bubbling up to the surface in a way that it hasn't before, alongside the other issue I think we were all very concerned about is these 2.6 million stillbirths. And if you added that to the child mortality figures, if these were live babies, it would actually represent 27% of all child mortality. So let's remember too, I think is it the 1.2 million intrapartum stillbirths. But how do we get from knowing the situation, knowing some of the plans that are out there, to something that will make sense for every country? This is a situation on the, on the reduction of mortality, the average annual reduction rate. Again, we've heard about that, but it leaps out at you, the figures for the newborn. 30% slower. We know this pie chart, most of us in this room are very familiar with it, but as preterm was a bit of the focus last year, we're hoping that this year, everyone, the media, all the people that matter are talking about this fairly inexcusable situation where 43 odd percent of new newborns are still dying. So why the past does not have to be our future, I think I'd like to um, uh, draw on something Gary said this morning. We have to explode the myth that simple things are not possible. We know that we have these interventions, we know what the causes are, and I think we were just saying before this panel, we can do it. Why are we not doing it? Will a plan actually make any difference? So what is it? Uh, a roadmap for change? I mean, there's that famous sort of Alice in Wonderland quote, if you don't know where you're going, any road will get you there. But I think if you can articulate the vision, the goals, we've heard some fantastic experiences in this room today of countries that have taken action. Was it the happiness plan or something, I love that. We've got the nappiness plan now, but anyway, bring them all together. Um, and importantly, and I think there are a lot of many different stakeholders in this room, but it does require, and I think Sue and Bayer spoke up this morning about uh, everyone's got to be on board with this. The parliamentarians, all the different actors, some people in some countries, very important for delivering services, might not necessarily be the government. What is this building on? We've heard also from um, several speakers today, Africa in many ways took the lead with the campaign for the accelerated reduction of maternal mortality in Africa. This has been launched in many different countries and obviously there's always been a key recognition that the newborn is an integral part with the mother. We've had the global strategy for women's and children's health which was launched by Ban Ki-moon. We also heard from him um, through the rep today. Um, in 2010, the global community came together and said it is simply inexcusable that with five years left to go to the MDGs, we still have these numbers of women and children dying, many from largely preventable causes. So this is trying to map out what we have to do to keep 16 million additional people alive who would not otherwise be. We've had various commissions and initiatives. I won't talk about some of them because there are others on the panel who will, but um, I think again, somebody this morning 
raise the linkage between family planning and reproductive health initiatives, newborn survival. I mean, to all of us here, this is common sense, perhaps a no-brainer, but I wonder how good we've been at really tying it all together. And above all, any plan has got to have something by which you're measuring results. So alongside the global strategy, we had a commission on information and accountability. It was chaired by President Kikwete and uh, Prime Minister Harper of Canada. And this set up this independent expert review panel, which again is looking at some key indicators, key recommendations. One of the recommendations, again, once one of our panelists mentioned it. We don't even know how many people we have. We don't know what the results are often. We had an instance recently, we tried to invite a, a young lady from Tanzania who had been forced into an early marriage to come to New York to speak, but she had neither a birth certificate, therefore neither a passport. Her five children didn't have a passport. These six people are now officially citizens of Tanzania. Regrettably, we only got her to um, New York through video link, but I think it was a very powerful reminder of how to measure results, we need to know what you've got. If you've not been counted, do you still count? And I think it's a, today in Bangkok, there's a big meeting on uh, civil registration and vital statistics. And I think it's important that we remember that too. Whoops. It's decided not to go anywhere. Okay. Um, I think the emerging themes, again, I won't um, dwell on any of them because I think there's a consultation later um, and we're going to discuss whether these are the right sorts of themes. Um, I think though maybe because of my background, I might pick out the stronger health systems. Again, it's something we hear the talk all the time. We know at the end of it, there's a woman and a child who doesn't particularly care what programs we've got or where the funding has come from. But what she and the child really need to know is that when they receive a service, it's going to be integrated that the health worker who looks after them has a set of skills that can cover multiple needs. There are no doors that say MDG4, MDG5, MDG6, and come back tomorrow because it's not your MDG4 day. So. so what are we trying to do? I mean, like we have for many other issues, try and build a movement, try and reach across, try and communicate. We can use our platform. We've got more than 500 and 30 odd partners now, some of them extremely active, and we would like to draw in those who maybe just do not know about some of these initiatives but would love to be engaged. Um, there is in this nappy, I think Kim really likes nappy, glow nap does not roll, roll off the tongue. Um, there's been a core planning group. We've got an advisory group coming together. We've now got all the energy in this group, and I'm sure, again, later in this meeting, we would love to hear from you how you think you can be involved either in the analytics, the advocacy, or most of all and best of all, the implementation. So what's next? There's this conference, which is fantastic. We've got the World Health Assembly coming up. We've got Women Deliver. There's several opportunities for national and regional consultations. There's now an online site. And the anticipated launch around World Prematurity Day which is the 17th, I think it's a weekend, so that's why I said around World Prematurity Day, because we want to get um, as many people as we can. And um, I think several people today have said, and that'll be my final story, um, remember the face. Some of you will have heard this before, but the first woman who died in my arms as a midwife, because I do have that very rusty skill still, um, died of a PPH in a day when we couldn't really do very much and in a situation, as Joy said, without water, without electricity, without anything, no mobile phones. This was the early 1980s. So I buried her newborn child who had no family, no relatives, because she had survived the Cambodian genocide to die in childbirth. Now today we have the tools, we have the know-how, we have the mobile phones, which isn't really an innovation, it's just a technology now which everyone has access to. So we can do it, and I hope your fellow panelists here will persuade you that it's very realizable, and we look forward to harnessing your energy. Thank you.